Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for clicking on today's video. I hope you guys are having a great Saturday, um, a good weekend, and we're finally into the month of August. So that means that, um, well, cozy season is starting to approach, even though if you're like me, you're in Arizona and it's still 100 degrees out. But um, we do have to look forward to the fall season. Otherwise, well, what are we going to do, right? So anyway, this is going to be a tutorial showing you specifically how to make um, this adorable tea bag mug coaster. Um, I decided to make this in one particular color, but obviously there's lots of different colors you can use for this. Um, and to show you examples of different ideas, um, this here is a black mug with matcha. I don't know who else is doing this kind of thing. Um, I've seen tons of browns, like coffees, and these are the most generic. Um, equally cute. But I just decided to pick it up a notch and really just try to be unique with these um, tea bags and doing more of a tea color. So, um, I guess that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. Now, here is one that I like to consider hot chocolate just because it's a little lighter. Um, so really all you have to do with these, it's the same pattern for all. I know this one looks a little bigger. The stitching is a little bit, um, not as tight. So you can tell that this one's definitely bigger. Um, but this is more the, um, I guess your usual size. And if I grab a cup, here's just a glass of water that I have right now, just to kind of show you how that fits. Um, even though you'll probably be using mugs for these, but cups, glasses, mugs, anything will do for these. Um, it is a fairly flat pattern, which is what you want. Um, so anyway, if you haven't already and you're interested with, um, in other crochet patterns of coasters, I did just post a mug rug tutorial. I actually just packaged them today um, in these little bags. I'm collaborating with um, <clears throat> my sister's channel, Drink Coffee Travel Often, and we're going to be putting together fall boxes for you guys. Um, I'm not going to say too much about them yet, but these are my little portion to add in the box. And they're just um, these little mug rugs. I have them folded in half and then I have this little thing stamped on there. So um, yeah, I think I'm going to make a video as well showing you how to package um, coasters and that sort of thing. I'm actually going to show you at the end of this video how to do that as well. If you wanted to make these and sell these, you are absolutely okay too. Um, you do not have to give me credit for this, even though I guess this is something that I did come up with. I just don't know how many other people out there are doing this, but feel free to make a ton of these and sell them if you want. I will show you at the end of this video how to package them and to make them look professional. So just a couple things that you guys are going to need to make these is obviously your color of choice for the mug. I have a little bit of green left. I'm going to try to see if this is going to make a whole one. If not, um, I might have to refilm, <laughs> but we'll see. You're going to want a tea um, or coffee color. You might notice my nails are white and this yarn isn't quite white. It's a little almost like a dusty pink and I thought it was a really cool. I just had like this is lily sugar and cream yarn, um, and so is this, and all of these are actually lily sugar and cream, um, cotton yarn, but, um, I just have a bunch of random colors like this laying around that I just don't know what to use, so this is the time if you have some yarn that's just sitting there, but it's a little too much to throw away yet, consider those options first, um, to choose what color. Obviously you don't want to do like a pink for the drink or like, I guess that's up to you. But for this, I thought this would be a cute kind of a tea, chai, chamomile type color. So just something to keep in mind for the yarn. Obviously you're going to want a crochet hook, one that matches the yarn that you're using, a pair of scissors. You're going to want to find, for the tea bag, you're going to want to find paper but not too light um 
this you can be flexible with. I honestly, this is from like a card, like a thank you card. And I just took the back off and I've been using it because it's a little bit more sturdy. Um, so I'll show you how to punch a hole in this at the end and take your um, twine and to make, you know, the string for the, the tea bag. Um, but of course you can use thread for that. You can use yarn if you want. Um, I just kind of like the sturdy look of the twine better. So um, just something to keep in mind. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into how to make a tea coaster. Okay, so step one, you're gonna wanna take your yarn and you're gonna make a slip knot. And if you don't know how to do that, I recommend looking up um, tutorials on how to do slip knots or um, we're not gonna be doing the magic circle on this. It's pretty straightforward, but if you do not know how to do this, um, maybe go learn the basics of crochet first and then come back because this pattern honestly is pretty simple. Um, you should be able to pick it up if you're a beginner, but just in case. We're gonna wanna start with a slip knot and we're gonna chain seven. So yarn over and pull through. You do that seven times. So there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And this is gonna be the bottom of the mug. So we're right here, right there. From here, we're gonna go in the second chain from our hook and we're gonna create a single crochet. And then place one single crochet in each chain across. Okay, and that is the end of round one. You should have six single crochets. Um, because we had seven at first, we left room for the first single crochet, so you should have six. For the second round, we're gonna chain one and turn, and that chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're gonna place one single crochet under where that chain was, the first stitch. Just do one single crochet and then one single crochet across again. So again, this should leave you with six single crochets at the end of the round. And when you get to your last one here, it might be kind of tricky to get that in there, but you wanna make sure you're getting it in each stitch because it might be problematic if you skip any. So just to make sure, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's chain seven, six single crochets, and six single crochets. And we should be right here-ish. Okay, now we're gonna increase and basically what that's gonna look like is two single crochets on both sides and one in the middle. So always at the start of each row, chain one and turn. We're gonna put two single crochets in the first stitch. One, 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 one. So four regular single crochets. I guess they're all regular. So two in the front, one and four, and then two at the end. So we're putting two. We have two. We're gonna put one single crochet in the next four. And we're gonna be going through both loops. Just like that, both loops. There's two. 
three and four, and then two in the last. Okay, so that should leave you with eight. You have two over here, four in the middle, and two over here. So that's four and four. And that was our first round of increasing. The next round, we're going to do one across of just one single crochet in each. So we chain one and turn and put one single crochet in each across. Okay, so that should leave you with eight. The next row we're going to chain one and turn and do the same thing we did two rows ago, which is two on the first, or two in the first, one in between, and then two in the last. So this is our second row of increasing. So two in the first, one in the next six, I believe. So two three, four, five, and six, and then two in the last. Okay, we're going to chain one and turn and just do one in each across. So you might notice a pattern. What you're basically doing is one round of two on each side and then one round of one in each and then you're repeating one round of two on each sides and then one round of one in each and you're gonna do that three times so here i just completed my i guess the middle row so our second row of increasing we're doing that three times so you're only doing it three times, and then I'll tell you what to do after that. So chain one and turn, and this is our last row of increasing, where we have two in the first, two in the last, one in between. Okay, I'm putting in two in the last. This is my last row of increasing. I'm going to chain one and turn and then do um, one row of just one across. Okay, so now you should have what looks like sort of that teacup shape. I guess it's a rhombus. Um, so we should be about there. In this pattern, like as you can see, we're almost pretty much done. They're very little, very easy to make, um, take a little time. So um, just with this little progress, we're already almost done. So all you want to do now is four rows. So we just did one that's just one in each. We're going to do four more rows of just chaining one and one in each. You're not going to increase. You're not going to do two on each side. We already were done with those. You should have done those three times with one across um, after each. So all you're going to do now is chain one and turn. Put one in each for the next four rows. Make sure at the end of each row you're chaining one and turning but that does not count as a stitch. So go ahead and complete that, and I will meet you back here once you have four. Okay, so here I am just finish um, my fourth and final row. 
Um, I actually just filmed a little segment where I told you guys it was time to cut off, and then I realized that it's not quite time to cut off, so that's why this knot is here. Um, <laughs> so let's ignore that. And uh, hopefully that part gets deleted so you guys don't do what I did. But we have one more row we're going to do before we finish with our green for now. Um, we are going to chain one and turn. What we're doing is creating, I guess, kind of like a the curvy part at the top. I don't even know if that makes sense. What we're trying to do is create a little like curve that goes into the drink. So we're like rounding off the top of the cup, I guess, because right now it's just flat across. So we're just going to create a little row that just goes, just kind of swoops up like that. So if you forget this row, I guess it's not necessary. Um, you probably won't notice, but I think it looks all the better if you remember, unlike me, I forgot. That's why this is here. Anyway, okay. So we change one to turn. We're going to put a double crochet in the first, which I know is awkward because we only chained one instead of two to get up to the height of a double crochet, but so a chain one, double crochet. We're also going to put a double crochet in the last because it's going to be cupping, but in the middle it's going to be flat. So we have two, basically before I, um, just to explain it real quick, one double crochet here, one here, a half double crochet next to those, and then in the middle, they're singles. So we just did our half, or we just did a double crochet. We're gonna do a half right next to it. And then single crochets in the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. So one single crochet in the next eight. And if you don't wanna count, just you're basically just going until you have two stitches left because you're going to do a half double crochet. So a half double crochet and then a double. So I don't know if that makes sense, um, but now you can kind of see that the edges are kind of rounded up and out and then the middle is just flush. So. I think that row can be pretty important just for the shape of the mug. But now we're ready to finish with this color um, at the moment because we're going to come back. But for now, we're going to finish that off and just do our drink color. So I have my little chai. I call it chai. Um, I don't know what y'all's chai chai teas look like, but I've had chai that looks this color, so don't correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not wrong. <laughs> so what we're going to do is find the first um, stitch over here, and if it's not exact, that's okay, but um, you just want it to be on this end over here. So you're going to find the first stitch of the last row. Insert your hook and attach your drink color. And what I do is I pull the yarn through and secure it off with a knot. And then obviously I work this um, tail end in. So to start our drink color, we're gonna pull up a loop and chain two. Um, we should technically be chaining one because this should only be a single crochet, but because we just attached the yarn, I personally like to do two single crochets because um, when I come back around with the with the mug color, it's gonna be hard to find that little that little tiny guy there. So I just like to chain two. Um, but this technically represents a single crochet. We're going to put one single crochet in the next stitch. So we have two single crochets. We're going to place one half double crochet in the third. And 
and then we're going to place one double crochet in the next six stitches. And don't forget to work in that tail end. Okay, so we just did six doubles, and then we're basically working backwards where we did the half double crochet and the two singles. So you should have three left, three stitches left. We're gonna do a half double, or yep, a half double in the next, the third to the last, and then one single in the last two stitches. So in a way, it's kind of the opposite of the previous row we did for the cup, which makes sense um, because we had the doubles on either side and then the singles in the middle, but this time with the drink, it's the singles on the outside with the doubles in the middle. So that threw me off at first when I was trying to learn how to make these, um, but you can kind of see how you want that 3D look. You want these doubles to be in the middle and then the drink kind of disappears on the edges. So that's all we're going to do with the drink color, which is kind of nice because if you only have a little bit of yarn like I do, a certain color you really want to use, <laughs> um, it's just helpful because you're not using so much of it. I just finish that off. Sometimes I tie these together, other times I just work them in as I come back around. But now we're going to go back to our mug color. Let's, let's see how much I can squeeze out of this. And I'm going to go back to this side. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. We're going to go to the right side. Attach the yarn right under that drink stitch where the two colors meet. I'm going to attach my yarn the same way. By tying a knot. I'm not going to worry about this tail end for now um, because you can't work in your tail end by slip stitching and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go in there and pull up a loop. So we're just going to kind of hold that back there. We're not going to worry about him for now. And we're basically going to work one sing or um, one slip stitch, not a single crochet, but a slip stitch in the back loops only along the drink's edge. So I'm gonna go in here, that first one, back loop only, and slip stitch. And do the same thing across. And we're basically just slip stitching along the back end of the drink. So you can start to get the picture. The only thing I don't like about this pattern is how ugly it makes this backside look. Um, so just make sure your stitches are nice enough to where you're not seeing this pop through. Um, same thing here. But you can see how the red, <clears throat> excuse me, the red is enough too. Sometimes this corner flaps up like that. But, um, it's yarn. What are you going to do, right? So once you're done slip stitching across the back loops, I got one more. 
Um, what I like to do, we're basically going to go all the way around until we reach here, but we're not going to do um, slip stitches. We're going to do single crochets and you're going to work in these tail ends. So I like to go in this one first where the two meet and do my first single crochet there and then just kind of work down the piece. Sometimes it's hard to assume where these holes are, um, but I think that comes with muscle memory. Obviously, you're going to do one here, maybe one here, here. So you just kind of go, you can kind of see them as you go along, um, but there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just make sure it doesn't look too bulky and not too stretched. When I get about halfway down, if I still have these tail ends, I cut them away. And as we keep going, we're going to approach the first tail end we did when we first started making the piece, which is right here down at this corner. And we're going to work that along as we go as well. So go in here and make sure you're pulling this tail end along the bottom. These might be a little tighter because they were the chains. Make sure you're getting the corners, you're not missing them. And then work your way back up the other side. Okay. So I'm going to go in here. It's my last one. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into the one right above it. And that kind of completes that um, the mug's outer edge. You know, this is kind of what I was talking about sometimes. If you do it too tight, you can see um, the mug color poking through, which is not how physics works. <laughs> but again, this is yarn, and don't be too hard on yourself, um, especially if it's your first one. And also sometimes, like, when you work that tail end in, if it's a different color, obviously it's going to try to poke through, but just do your best to hide it. Um, it's better to see it on the back side than it is the front side. So if you're going to show it at all, um, make sure it pokes through the back side. The amount, like, this is incredible that I've made one with just such little left. Um, <laughs> so anyway, what we're going to do, and we still have that tail end that I ignored at first, because we're going to come back around and take care of it. So we're going to do the handle now. We're almost done. We're going to chain one and turn. We're going to slip stitch, not in that same one that's coming out of the next one. And then we're just going to slip stitch one more. And now we're going to chain up amount that we want our mug to be. And this is usually about eight. seven, eight. Okay, and we're going to count a certain amount down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, because we chained eight, I just like to go in the eighth one. Um, but you can always, like, fix this and play around, like, where you want your, you know, handle to sit and all that. That's flexible. But you're going to slip stitch into that stitch that you want. Chain one turn and to make the handle thicker we're going to place 13 half double crochets in the gaps not in the stitches themselves that would be too annoying we're just going to do one half double or 13 half doubles going along this handle's edge And if you find that it's bunching up, um, oh, I just have this stuck here. 
If you find that it's bunching up and you're getting close to the end without having 13, you can slide it around. Um, so that's kind of the beauty with not going in the stitches and just the gaps. Okay, once we have 13, all we're going to do now is slip stitch into where it's coming out of originally and finish off. And look at that, I was able to get, I even have some leftover. So um, I like to pull this through the loop to secure it. Sometimes that can make it look a little funny, so you can just play around with that. But um, I like it. You know, obviously you can go back and make this be higher. You can make it be um, more, I guess, skinny or wide or whatever you want. And then what I like to do with this little piece we just finished off with, I just kind of work it through up until I get to the area that this <laughs> last piece was hanging, if that makes sense. So I put them close enough to each other, I tie them off, and um, I, like, I tie them together and then finish it off. So that's just my way of securing. I don't like to have knots all over my pieces, so sometimes I try to combine two strands if I can. All right, and we're almost done. Last thing we have to do is add our little tea bag. So to do that, you're just gonna cut, I like the size that I did here. So you're gonna cut a shape. You take your scissors and your paper and you're going to cut a little piece of paper that can represent your tea bag. This, ladies and gentlemen, does not have to be perfect. So don't worry if it's at a weird angle like that. We're in this together because what you're gonna do is you're gonna be like me and you're gonna try to continue to make it perfect and it's just not gonna work. This one's close, actually. But if you keep cutting like that, you're going to realize that you're just chipping away at the paper and then before you know it, it's just, yeah. So, I don't recommend. Um, I forgot to mention that you're going to want to grab a needle of some sort. Even if it's a yarn needle, um, I'll do my smaller one. You just need something that's going to poke through the paper that you're using. Um, because you have to get the twine through the paper. So we take this and we pop a hole kind of around the top. Be very careful. Don't poke yourself. I've done that enough. But also don't... Um, oops, where did that go? Guys, I use a... Um, I use my guitar stand as my tripod. Um, so yeah, it's okay if it's a little bent, you know, like I kind of bent it there. Honestly, it's really hard to get a hole in there without doing that, so don't worry. It's not going to be perfect. Just get a hole in there, take your twine, cut a piece, and before you attach it, you're going to make a knot on one side. Just a knot, nice and simple. What I like to do is attempt to stick this through. Sometimes it gives me issues, but... See what I mean? It, like, frays. Um, but so long as you can get it through here. <laughs> Please don't rip. You just have to you know, pray to God sometimes and um, pull it through. 
I pull it all the way up to the knot. This is obviously our back side. We don't want to show the knot because it's going to look like that. And what we're going to do now is secure it on, I like to go one, two, three. Um, between the second and the third stitch here with the white, I just pull this through. Oh, okay, it's bunching. Sometimes that, um, that's, that can be an issue with twine, is it likes to bunch. But um, as long as you're careful, you can pull it off. So you're kind of going to like lay it where you want it. Um, you can make it as long as you want it or as short. <clears throat> I kind of like it so that it's about there. So you're going to tie off a knot. <laughs> it's a mess. You're going to tie a knot on the back side. You're going to tie up to that point though. Sometimes if it pokes through your yarn a little easier, you might want to make a double knot. Obviously if you pull it enough, it's just going to pull right through. Um, there's really nothing you can do about that, but so there's a double knot. Let's trim that to size. This one's a little shorter than what I would like it to be actually, but um, it works, works for me, so. All right, guys, um, that is it for this tutorial, um, for how to make the coaster. Um, you can glue, I was, I'm, th I'm still thinking about whether or not I want to glue this into place, but I think it's also cute just being its own thing. So, I don't know, comment down below, what do you guys think? Do you think we should glue these down and just kind of keep them secure, or do you think it's cute with, you know, more more 3d look i guess um anyway that is how you make a little tea bag um mug coaster and i'm gonna show you really quickly a really cute way to package these and to sell them okay so just a couple things to um purchase that would be well worth your time and money these two products right here from Michaels and they're fairly cheap. I think, I don't know, I think this was like five bucks or something and this was the same thing. Um, these, this is a 20 pack of clear envelopes and they're basically used like what this bag, what they're in right now is like this little sticky thing. So I thought it'd be a cool idea to put a couple of these in there along with A little card this is this comes with um, cards and envelopes I have not used the envelopes just the cards themselves I um, have a I had a stamp made for me by darling papery um, I think I've done a video about when I first received this stamp so um, if you want to go back and see that this is really off-center now that I look at it but anyway um, it's a really cute way to package these let's say you want to sell two a little pair all you have to do is just create some kind of card you can go to the store get a stamp something that says handmade or thank you or whatever you can even handwrite something on there whatever it is you want to do um basically going to take one of these take your two place it right on top I like to have this sticky part on the bottom, which means I'm going to flip this over. And all you're going to do is obviously peel the sticky part off and fold it over. And then you have a little packaged. Um, a little packaged goodie bag thing and I did that with these already these are for my sister um, we've just working through some colors and different ideas so she gets the custom 
extra colors that I came up with. So um, this is a pack of four. Just kind of shows you. It's just a nice little simple way of packaging things. So, um, but yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope this tutorial was easy for you to follow. But as always, leave questions down below if you guys need help. I will be here to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for my subscribers um, for continuing to support me. If you're new, subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to be notified every time I upload a video. Give this video a thumbs up and, of course, all my other videos if you like them. And comment down below, let me know how I'm doing, and feel free to share this video to others as well. So that is it. I will see you guys in my next video and have a good day.